years ago, this foundation gave the Alameda Medical Research Center a grant of three of $18 million. Today, we are fortunate enough to have the center's founder, Dr. Samuel Edwards, here to tell us the findings of that research. Dr. Edwards? Thank you, uh, Dr. Lang. Uh, and thanks to all of you for your continued generous support in the field of pioneering medical research. Uh, without you, the work being done in Alameda and many other facilities across the country would, would surely not be possible. Over the last five years, my team and I have had one simple but ambitious goal, to cut off a man's head with a knife, to stick that man's head onto a pig's body, and for that head to keep working like normal. <laughs> In 2006, as soon as your check for $18 million cleared, we began. We knocked out a man and a pig and tied them down with belts and sheets. On the count of three, we sliced through both of their heads, shoved the pig's head onto the floor, and placed the man's head on the pig's body and sewed it up. Now, just to be clear, for the purposes of this research, we don't care if a pig's head survived on a man's body. I mean, that would be great, it's just not what we're after. <laughs> Our goal is a man's head alive on a pig's body, walking around on all fours. Here a pig, here a pig, here a pig, everywhere a pig. Man's head. <laughs> A man's head that would be walking, talking, eating, and sleeping, and winking just like normal. Man's head, pig spot. Now the first time we tried it, it didn't work. The man's head died right after we cut it off with a knife, and all of the blood fell out of the neck. Now our director of hematology, Dr. Alan Jacobson, he had the idea to do it faster so that less blood would fall out of the, fall out of the hoses in the neck. Uh, so instead of, instead of walking with the head, we began uh, jogging. <laughs> Unfortunately, even the jogged heads died. <laughs> Uh, the same thing happened when we hurled them. <laughs> but we kept at it because we figured it was partly a numbers game and that eventually one of those heads would keep eating, breathing, and cracking jokes just like any other head. Except that the whole time, uh, that head would be powered by the body of a fat, fat pig. Uh, so that if it were to wear a business shirt, uh, out of the back you'd see uh, pig's haunches uh, and a curly, curly tail. Be a dress shirt with cufflinks, pig's hooves. Pig's hooves, haunches, a curly, curly tail, man's head. And the man's head would say, would say normal things like, um, you know, how you doing? <laughs> that, that's what we were shooting for. Uh, but instead, all of the heads, they just kept turning off and <laughs> the blood fell out of their necks and, and the, the heads just, they would not turn back on. <laughs> now, by 2011, uh, when after 72 long years, we had yet to accomplish our goal, we were beginning to lose hope. Until, until last spring, when the results of one particular attempt, it surprised us all. It started out completely normal. Uh, we cut off a man's head and we put it on a pig. Uh, we slapped it around a little bit to try to wake it up. Uh, it, it flopped back and forth and, and then it, it hung there loose and white. Uh, and we were, just, we were just about to throw it all in the trash compactor when suddenly we, we thought we heard something. We thought we heard something. Everybody froze. Shh, 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 shh. Turn down the radio. Turn off the radio. Shh. Rick, turn off the radio. I don't care what you're listening, just turn off the radio. Okay. Turned off the radio. We gathered around the head of a 29-year-old man, 
It's loosely stitched on the still warm body of a full grown pig. And I, I leaned in and I looked it right, right in the eyes. And I said, hello. Hello, did you say something? Head, did you say something? Did this work? <laughs> Nothing happened. <laughs> Nothing happened, but we were pretty sure that we heard something the first time. Uh, so, consider your $18 million well spent. <laughs> Sorry. I'm so sorry. I was just thinking about some lasagna. <laughs> We're having it for lunch, brought in from the catering company this afternoon, and it's it's a very good lasagna. <laughs> good pasta, very good sauce, good meat, you know? And they know what they're doing over there. Okay, they're not dicking around. They make good food at an affordable price, and they really reap the benefits, okay, because everybody orders from them. Heck, they're putting a couple of the other catering companies out of business, okay? I mean, what are we gonna do? Order bad lasagna just to foster competition? I don't think so. That's not me, no. What I care about <laughs> is lasagna, okay? It's good. I love it. What can I say? I love it. You know? So I'm afraid I zoned out there, okay? And I apologize for not hearing your words. But what I would really like to do is give you some more dollars. Would that be okay with you? Yes. That would be wonderful. Oh, actually, <laughs> I, uh, I forgot the rest of the slides.